Good day, everybody. My name is Dana Massett with Ascend Your Soul and the Mindful Mama. And I have this wonderful series, podcast series that I've been doing called Mindful Souls, where I bring amazing people, humanitarians, healers, psychologists, psychotherapists, people that are working to create that change and healing in the community. And today I'm interviewing Christina Sutra. I'm so excited to have this conversation with her. I have so many questions to ask, and I feel like we're just going to flow so good that I'm I'm probably going to go off topic. So enjoy the moment with us. Christina Sutra is a self-taught artist, feminine embodiment, and lifestyle transformation coach. She's married and has three small children. Christina works from home running an art business, and she also loves coaching women to live their most embodied and unapologetic lives. I love that. She loves assisting women in finding their most expansive and expressive self so they can manifest their dreams into reality. She is passionate about what she does, and she brings this magnetic energy into everything she does. Okay. So welcome, Christina. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I'm so excited to join you on this. Awesome. So I love self-taught self -taught artists. I have so many friends same journey. And it's like, you can feel like their art is from the soul, from the heart. How did you start that journey? Like how did art kind of awaken within you? Thank you for that question. Yeah. I'm super passionate about art just because of all the doors it seems to open. Um, not even, you know, physically, but like internally, spiritually, emotionally. Um, and so it actually, you know, like so many people, it's kind of like this dark night of the soul happened. I was really, yes experiencing a lot of postpartum depression after my first daughter and I didn't really have any kind of self-care practices I didn't have anything I did besides just be a mom and that kind of you know made me depressed in a way and so I started doing yoga randomly um, because I saw a pose on Instagram and I tried to copy the pose the crow pose and I yes. couldn't do it and immediately I was like man that looked so easy but I can't do it and I was immediately hooked like I was like I'm gonna practice this and so that kind of became like a daily practice but then it kind of graduated into me like you know exploring more things yeah so I had found yoga and you know gradually started um, having a little yoga space you know where I'd go into the it was like a spare bedroom and I started carrying around this notebook where I I'd watercolor in it and I draw on it and I take it with me in my purse everywhere and I started taking those pages out of the notebook and putting it on my wall kind of like as decoration and then yeah. sometimes I'd share that on my Instagram and people would be like can I buy that and I was like so flabbergasted that anybody wanted to buy it and it really right. just it opened up this possibility for me that I didn't even know existed and that's the beauty of following your passion and and doing what you love because people just naturally gravitate to you and you know and so yeah. I that's how I really started to rediscover my own artistic side I'd kind of neglected it after I became a mom and I got married and all this stuff we moved around I was married to you know I'm married to a, um, a soldier in the army so um, I kind of shifted a lot through the through that time but I came back to art and I'm so grateful that I did because it's opened so many more doors for me and, and really helped me uncover who it is that I am at a core level, like what my core essence and what I'm here yeah. to do. And, and that's really, you know, I'm passionate about other people really realizing that they get to create their life and they get to, you know, really invoke that inner artist, that inner creator that is within them. And I think as we become adults we kind of forget that we are creators that we are artists and and I'm passionate about reawakening that in people because I feel like we're really craving that you know we are creative beings and when we lose touch with our creativity we kind of feel stagnant in life sometimes and nobody wants to feel like that you know, I know. when you started like re kind of claiming yourself because I feel like when we claim ourselves, even 10 years from now, it changes again. So we have to like give ourselves permission to like own it again and get to know ourselves again. What was your brain telling you? Like, did you have the negative critic? Was it trying to beat you down? What was that experience? Yeah, that's a beautiful question. Um, you know, I had followed a few artists online um, and one of them, Charmaine Olivia, I remember seeing her art studio and I was so like, wow, like what a dream that would be to have an art studio. And she was like such an inspiration to me. 
And I started realizing slowly that I can create my own version of that. And, and I did. And now I have an art studio of my own that I love to be in. And yeah, so sometimes when we look at other artists online that are successful or whatever we want to do, and we see that reflection out in the world, we can kind of uh, want to like kind of be like them a little too much. And so that was something I went through. I was like, oh, I need to do it like this. I need to do it this way. I need to have things this certain way. And right. that really, that it was never <laughs> successful that way. You know, anytime I've ever tried to do art that was like, looked like somebody else's art or whatever, it was never, you could tell it was just not the full essence of, of what we're capable of, you know, and that's okay. Like, you know, as we're ex exploring ourselves it's okay to like take inspiration from people as long as you're like really committed to finding your own your own voice your own expression yes and instead of replicating mm -hmm. yeah. and that's okay you know like especially when you're just starting out um I have no problem people you know I see reflections out in the world that looks a lot like my stuff and I don't take it personal you know yeah. and Maybe that's the case for me too. Maybe my stuff looks like somebody else's stuff that I don't even know. And that's, you know, it is what it is. We yeah. do have collective consciousness. So that's real, you know? Um, but yeah, so it was really realizing that I get to be whatever it is I, I, I am. And the more that I embody and the, the more that I really get to claim that authenticity, the more magnetic I become. And so it's like this freedom that happens is like, wow, I don't have to do it like anybody else. And there's magic in doing it my own way. And whatever that shift, like whatever those shifts happen in my life, like let me honor that and it will help open new doors for me. And maybe I'll start doing a, a new type of art I didn't even know existed just by being open and receptive to possibility. Yes, absolutely. So, when you're yeah. in your process of creating, do you feel like you're opening a channel? Is something coming through? Like what's your experience? Yeah, and I've actually heard that too, that when, you know, we're writing or we're talking or we're doing art, we're actually channeling. And I feel that really strongly. I feel that's true. Um, my process, when a lot of times when I do abstract art on canvas, because I do so many different kinds of art. I do alcohol ink and I do acrylic pouring. But the one that I'm really passionate about is like just working on canvas with pastels and with, you know, paint. Yeah. And my process really sometimes I go to it with like a sketch on paper that I kind of look at as like a basis um, but I really try to let the inspiration flow through me and so I try not to have any preconceived ideas or like expectations of what it looks like because it never turns out how like I imagine in my mind and the, the less expectation I have I found the more brilliant the art is because you know maybe I'll scribble over here and I'll make some slashes over here and all this you know imperfection is what makes it so like captivating yeah it's because it's not perfect and that's like such a beautiful reflection of our own being because we don't have to be perfect our stretch marks are beautiful our scars are beautiful our hair being all crazy can be beautiful and <laughs> like wow it's kind of like you could just give yourself permission to let whatever comes through come through and that's the beauty of it it doesn't have to be perfect Right. And, and yeah, I know some, everybody has a different style of art and everything, but for me personally, the more I let myself just go wild with it, the more yeah. captivating the art becomes. And it's like better than I could have even imagined in the first place when I sit down to I do love it. it. Um, you're such a like unapologetic person, like your energy, I can feel it 100%. In your earlier years, were you ever like contained? Like, did you feel like you were putting yourself in a box? Like, did you have that experience or right off the bat, have you always been this like free spirit? No, yeah, that was a gradual process. That's, that's okay. an awesome question for you um, because it can definitely appear like, oh, she's always been like that. Um, but it was a gradual process and it was really expressing yoga for me that started it all because I, I would, you know, post yoga and like regular leggings and stuff. But then I started like wearing short shorts and like, you know, yeah. getting a little more sensual with it. And it actually created some problems in my family with my husband's brother and sister-in-law. And yeah. they basically disowned me because they thought it was inappropriate. And, you know, um, my husband thankfully stood up for me and was like, you know, you know, keep doing your thing. It's okay. Like if they feel that way, that's, there's nothing we can do about it. Yeah. And that was a thing to go through because 
how easy it would have been for me to apologize and be like, oh my God, I'll never do that again. Like I'll stop sharing. But I, in my core essence of who I am, I was like, no, I'm like, I apologize if you feel that way. And like, you know, I never want to offend you or like make you feel like your kids can't look at my Instagram, but in my heart of hearts, I truly feel like I'm doing nothing wrong. And, and yeah. it's really just self-expression and I kept going and I kept, you know, sharing. And I actually felt a little bit of fuel from that. Like yeah. I'm going to share even more, you know, kind of like that yeah. rebel came out and, you know, it really just gives permission for other people to be unapologetic about themselves too. Um, you know, when they see that reflection out in the world, I know I do that too. When I see other people just sharing their opinions and their voice with, they don't give a crap yeah. what anybody thinks like there's ma- that's magnetic, isn't it? Even if you yeah. disagree with them, it's like, wow, you have some courage to really activate your throat chakra like that, you know? And, and if it's not like inspiring the people that get triggered, that's like the shadow work. Like if, when people are triggered by other people, it's something unresolved inside, you know, it is. I have chills when you say that it's so real and we yeah. experience that when we get triggered. You know, I, I think we all get triggered. Like my thing, I get triggered when I see women like making millions of dollars doing what they love with ease. And I'm like, Oh my God, like it's because I want that too. And yeah. I love, I'm actually thankful. I see that. And I get bothered because it shows me what I actually want. If I didn't yeah. want that, I wouldn't be bothered. Right. And, and like, if there's blockages, like, because we have to work with our programming. So like we could have that, but there's probably a program that's operating even subconsciously that's telling us we can't. Amen. That's yeah. so, and so, then isn't that half the battle is getting your subconscious on board? <laughs> 100%. And that's the shadow work. And it's, it's difficult. It's scary. Like you spoke about the dark night of the soul, which I'm so happy you have that experience but that's scary like for you did you know in the moment that that's what was happening no I didn't yeah it just felt like I was really depressed I had really no direction and I knew I wanted to be more than just a mom I mean everybody has their unique path and sometimes you know being a mother and being a homemaker is like so fulfilling to people I honor that that's so perfect yeah. for like some people, but I knew in my heart that there was more that I wanted to, to do to more that I wanted to express. And, yeah. and when we're not doing that, when we're not living our Dharma, when we're not living our purpose, it's uncomfortable for a reason, because it's pushing us. It's asking us to, to go there, to, to get uncomfortable. If you have to, to reprogram. And thankfully we live in a, a time now where there's tools everywhere you look, there's Google, yeah. there's coaches everywhere and it's really a matter of us being open to to other people's knowledge and other people's magic and their healing and and just being open to that because we can't Absolutely. really get too far if we're not open to change exactly and sometimes people think they're ready but but they're not you know so even like this the readiness has different stages um the dark night of the soul it's so powerful. If we can embrace it, it's scary at the same time, but it does feel like a shedding. Like we're, we're releasing programming. We're releasing our old self. We're releasing the mass, the roles that we either took on or were placed upon us. Yeah. How did you, I know you used yoga to shift through it. Did you do like any journaling? Like what was your reflection process and healing process with the yoga? Yeah. Um, journaling for sure. But it, I think it really came back to art too, and really yeah. seeing that I have I have something there um, that I have you know that <laughs> it's not just for fun that it, it can be a healing practice that that yeah. making art and and seeing your art and like really looking at what you created and knowing that there's literally an infinite well of where that comes from within you you know what I mean and yes. just, yeah and and so it was really the art piece that kept me inspired and kept like carried me through that time because it just felt like such a primal like wild woman kind of like reclamation of mm-hmm. you know I have magic in me and I'm going to express that onto a canvas or whatever and that really did carry me through those hard moments and and help me really you know get clear on my own inner core essence that I carry with me and it's funny you talk about the dark night of the soul because I, one thing that I was introduced to recently is like a kind of a practice that some coaches use 
Um, yeah. I've never heard of it before, but it's like literally having a funeral for your old self. <laughs> and I've never heard of that. I was like, wow, what a potent practice that probably is. Yeah. So. It's like in your face, like a funeral. Like I've had like burning ceremonies, right? But like a funeral for yourself, you have to say goodbye. Like you have to say goodbye. You have to grieve. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. I'll have to look into that for sure. Yeah. Um, I see some of your art, Egyptian. What's the pull there? Like, what's the attraction to Egyptian? In my office, I have Egyptian stuff all over the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, man. It's always just been something I've been naturally drawn to, even before I even knew what it ever meant. I remember in, like, in university, before I was, like, spiritually awakened, um, I had to do a project and I, I dressed up in Egyptian makeup. And, like, that was always something I was just intuitively drawn to. Yeah. And, and I just love, I mean, Egyptian, Egypt is my number one place I would go any, if I had an opportunity to, um, and I'm just so drawn there to the magic and the, the, the culture and the, the intellectual capabilities and the technological advancements that they had. I mean, it's truly unreal what they, yeah. did, you know, and we often think of the ancient culture as like, you know, primitive or whatever. No, they were so advanced. Um, yeah. And it's like the pyramids line up to like the belt of Orion, right? So there was so much more that we don't even know. Um, and so it's funny because later on I had past life readings and healings and Egyptian energy always comes through. And I yeah. had my astrology chart read and what's called a- astrocartography. And it, it has to do with your um, natal chart like lines. And um, I can't remember what planet, but it was the one to do with past lives. And it went right through Cairo, Egypt. And I was just like, wow, like that's like even more evidence of like a past life there. And I've had visions, you know, visions of like walking in hallways there and being like just there. And then just, yeah, I'm sure you know that feeling if you're connected to it, you don't really know, always know why, but it's very meaningful. Right. And, and it's coming out of your artwork, like so beautifully. Like when I see even like the sacred geometry, like you can, your soul is pouring out into it. Now you're a coach too. What's your style of coaching? Like, I'm sure women that are drawn to you want to become apologetic. Doesn't mean they're ready. Like, how do you facilitate that? Yeah. Um, I'm kind of new to this. I mean, I feel like I've been kind of that energy in a, in a way just on my Instagram already, but I'm really stepping into that as like a practice. I'm working with people one-on-one now and so rad. Like it lights me up to see women like igniting their voice. I've had women that start talking on their stories when they never did before because they were too timid. And like the, just the transformation that you see before your very eyes, it's like, you just want to like cheer them on and just be like, yes, go girl. Like set that example for your children and those around you. Like it's so powerful. And yeah, my style of coaching is really like unique to the individual, what they want. You know, a lot of times it is, how do I become more established in my truth, in my voice, in my expression, and just what, like recognizing it's little steps and it's in our habits, it's in our mindset. How are you talking to yourself? What kind of self-care do you have? Do you have self-care? And yeah. recognize how important these little things are to the transformation of your lifestyle in general, because that's what we're really going for is a change, not just in your mindset, but in your lifestyle. When you wake up in the morning, do you grab your phone or do you grab a book? Like if you grab your phone, let's grab a book instead, you know, kind of thing. And really get clear on your own energy and your own desires. So then you can take the steps to get there instead of kind of this free for all. Like, I don't really know what I'm doing kind of energy because that's, I found with a few clients, that's kind of where they are. It's like, they know they have something to offer, but they don't know what to offer yet. And so I don't have the answers for that, but all I can do is help guide you you know, what excites you? What gets you motivated? What lights you up? What do you feel like you can add to people's lives and follow that? Because that's going to keep you excited. It's going to keep you wanting to do it, you know? Right. Yeah. It's so true. Like patterns are so strong. Patterns are in the subconscious, the conscious mind. And we think that if like someone even lays the groundwork, like, hey, follow step one, two, and three, 
it's it's so much more difficult than that because it's almost like our generational energy is pushing us towards those negative patterns. We really have to keep ourselves accountable. So um, what are you looking forward to like for this year? Like we're kind of coming out of COVID. We're kind of coming out of the pandemic. What are you looking for for you, like for your art, for your business? What are you excited about? I'm excited to step into service to others in a way that is more bold. Um, like I, I've been myself, you know, in my own art studio, like online, but I'm really stepping into poaching containers, working face to face with women. And I'm co-hosting a retreat in Washougal, Washington on March 20th. It will be my first time ever kind of doing that kind of thing where there's like cocoa, cacao ceremony and embodied da dance and all these like feminine primal things that I've always wanted to do. I've actually never been to a retreat myself. I've yeah. never had that experience. So the fact that I've been invited as a guest speaker to do like an art sensuality class, I'm like so ready and I'm kind of scared, but I know there's magic in being scared. <laughs> but and, if right. And you probably have done retreats in another lifetime. So it's going to yeah. be natural. Yeah. Oh, I love that so much. Yeah. And I, I just, I've really gotten my confidence up to where I'm like, I can do anything. And if it scares me, then right on, you know? <laughs> and yeah. the secret is you just have to show up. Like if you can get out of your head and just show up and this goes for everybody, just show up. The magic is going to come through. What you need to say is going to come through. What you need to do is going to come through. It's almost that conditioning that we have to plan everything um, you have to be like organized. You have to have the script and mm -hmm. it's it, throw it out to show up because your oh. energy connects with those women, with those people. And the perfect thing is going to be birth, just like when you're creating art, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And just showing up in that vulnerable way. I know a lot of women who do coaching and they don't even have a plan when they launch, like they, they have like a, a guided plan, but like they really follow their intuitive guidance and that's what makes them so successful. They yeah. launch when it feels right and they, they close it when it feels right and they start when it feels right. And that's so beautiful. That's the feminine way of doing things, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, it, you will attract the right people that need your medicine. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like we all carry a certain frequency and the right people are going to come to you yeah. with your art it's so accessible to like the normal person. So like it's affordable, which I love. Is that part of your intention to like share your art to with everybody? Because sometimes the prices go so high that like your everyday person can't purchase it. Yeah. I just, I love what I do so much. I actually love like packaging the art. I love that. That's my life. I just have so much gratitude in my heart. Like when I, when I sit there and package all these packages, it really still, even three years later, I just feel such immense gratitude. And, and like, I literally get to do this. Like, I'm just like blown away that people want to buy my art. And that's why I do have prints for like $20 and stuff. And, and yeah, because I know sometimes women, they, they're like, it's like step-by-step step. and yeah, not all women have $200 to spend on a painting or, or a thousand dollars or whatever. And I know I've been kind of not criticized, but some people are like, girl, you need to up your prices. And I'm like, I understand that. But like, I have an abundant mindset. Money flows to me in multiple ways all the time. Like I'm not worried about it. And this is something that really I'm passionate about. And it, it I'm, you know, even my child care, she's an aspiring artist. And so she's going to come tomorrow and package the paintings for me and like print out the labels for me. And in that way, she gets to see how it's done and like how I do it. And it's kind of like fueling her and her, like her inspiration. So I just think it's so cool. This, this continuously like elevating energy exchange between yes. people. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like inspiration, sharing, um, like just in society, I feel like people always talk about like empowering women, like women empowering women, but it's just a phrase, but like you're doing it. <laughs> you know, like that's, that's all you have to do. Like help somebody, like raise them up, give them opportunities, um, yeah. share your energy. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, I had like another second mini night of the dark night of the soul when I was 
like really overwhelmed with all the orders I had to get out. And I was like wearing my baby and he was crying. And I remember like getting on my story, like, I'm so exhausted. Like, I'm so sad. Like, I don't know how I'm going to keep doing this. I need childcare. It's like, I had to get to the point where I was so just like tapped out that I, I finally asked for help. You know what I mean? And yeah. asking for help with somebody on Instagram is who works for me now. And she yeah. brings a three-year-old son and gets to play with my three-year-old son. And it's only happened because I was finally open to that help. You know what I mean? And it is. Yes. What's your, um, what's your Zodiac sign? Uh, Gemini. Gemini. Okay. So like a really strong sign. I'm like, you have to have like a fire sign or Gemini yeah. totally makes sense. And it is hard to like ask for help. So good for you for like knowing I have this option. I can ask for support. We're in this together. Yeah. I felt so much guilt around it. And same thing with like ever hiring um, housekeeping, you know, like I was like, who am I to hire help? Like I should do it all. And there's almost like this weird badge of honor that we wear, like when we're like, oh, I can do it all, you know, yeah. and kind of, I was afraid of criticism, honestly, from other people of like how you're hiring a nanny, like you're not self-made kind of energy. You know what I mean? And uh, that's what I'd never wanted. And finally I was like, forget that. Like I need help and I'm, I'm claiming help for myself and it's really freed up so much time. I mean, if you think about anybody who's successful, they delegate, yeah. they delegate, yeah. you know? Absolutely. And it's just a story. So the story that whether it's a woman or a man that wants to say like, oh, I'm doing it all. It's a story. Yep. Like nobody cares at the end of the day, how you're doing the thing. It's like, make sure you're okay. Make sure you're doing it the way that works for you. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. That's beautiful. I'm so excited about your retreat. Um, definitely send me information about that. So I can send that out um, to my clients. It sounds amazing. It's in Washington. Washougal, Washington. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So how long is it going to be? Excited. Um, it's from 3 p.m. to 10 p.m. at night. Okay. Um, it's like a whole, every hour, every like 30 minutes, there's like oh, something going on. So I have the whole itinerary and the ticket master link and everything ready to go. So amazing. Send it over. Cause I definitely want to post that. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so blessed. I'm so honored. Um, and I'm so excited to see what you do. Cause I feel like you're elevating to the next level. Like you're opening yourself up for more abundance. So I'll be watching you because I know you're going to do amazing things. Oh, thank you so much. I really received that. Thank you. Awesome. So we'll chat soon. Thank you so much okay. for being here today. Awesome. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.